today I'm going to work on a um, Tokyo street scene and I'm using a 60 by 60 centimetre canvas. It's a block canvas so it's got a very deep edge here so I'm going to take um, some of the painting around the edge a little bit. Um, I'm using acrylic paint and lots of different papers. Uh, some of them are um, things that I've collected in Japan. Some of the, well, most of the papers actually are papers from Japan. All sorts of bits and pieces. Some of them are just junk mail or packaging. Some of it is lovely um, origami paper, which I can I buy out there. So there's all sorts of um, paper to use and just ordinary acrylic, heavy body acrylic um, is what I like to use and PVA glue and firstly I'm going to stick some papers on I've, it's not really random but it's very freely done so that I actually um, get a nice surface over which to work with the um, acrylics and then I can gradually refine it to um, make the, the painting work. I'm using PVA glue just on the back of the papers. And I'm going to start by just taking some of it round that edge there. And making sure it gets well stuck down. As it dries, a lot of the wrinkles just um, disappear which is really nice. Um, so I'm lucky to have um, family that come from Japan so I've been able to go out there um, and get my own photographs and really get to know the country a little bit. Um, and we went this summer, just gone, and um, it was very, very hot. So it was a very hot day when I took this photo in Tokyo. Um, so it was people with umbrellas or, or parasols, and it's got a lot of um, sunshine in it, which is nice. So. I'm using here the, the first bits of paper, basically bits of um, wrapping paper, but, oh, paper that's been wrapped around things that you buy, um, which they do quite a lot out there, everything seems to be very well wrapped um, with these lovely papers. So I'm just doing a bit around the edge to start with. I'm also going to use some of this, which is, it came from this book. It, this is an old accounts book that was uh, came from my daughter-in-law's family. Um, they used to have a tea shop about a hundred years ago, part of the family. And the paper's beautifully strong paper. And um, I rather like the sort of the lines on it, and basically, um, it, I think it works really well in in a kind of city painting. So I'm just tearing it. Um, a lot of the papers that I use are torn. I don't. I sometimes will use scissors, but I like to keep the painting very free. Um, and that's just one way that helps me to do that. And then occasionally I'll use scissors and that just adds to the, the effect. And you can see I've got this edge of the paper as well, which occasionally you can use an edge like that um, instead of tearing, instead of cutting to get a, a nice sharp edge. So you'll see as the painting progresses that these are really just under, it's like an underpainting really. Um, so I'm not too worried at this point um, about what it's 
you know, the position of everything. It's really just to get the, the um, canvas covered. Um, And some of the papers that I put on now, some of it will more or less be completely covered, whereas other parts, there'll be little hints of it coming through in the final painting. So I love that um, layered effect. So I've also got some um, handmade papers, very textural. Some of these were given to me actually, so really nice handmade papers. Um, some of them I buy um, from Japan. So I'm going to put a little bit of some of this on, which is going to just add a bit of texture as well. quite a lot of PVA. When it's very thick paper, this is fairly thick, the one I'm doing now, um, I keep the, pack, the glue very, fairly neat. You can add water to it as you go along to, to loosen it up a bit if, you, um, if you're using some more like a tissue paper or something. Uh, I'm also going to use a bit of newspaper, which is always interesting. almost like tissue it's quite fine but it's got this lovely calligraphy printed on it which is really useful you just get a lovely feel um, yeah, so I'm going to add a bit I'm going to tear that because that's going to be quite nice I think to go around the edge a little bit thin the paper so the glue can be a little bit diluted. I'm just going to really bring this in so that it again it can go around the edge because I think as it's not going to be framed it would be quite nice to have something around the edges because um, it's really all part of the painting then. As I go, I can add more over the top as well if I want to. So I'm going to use some paint now. Um, really, just to help to pull it all together a bit um, otherwise it's you know I, I, I could be sticking and glue you could do just a collage without paint I know a lot of artists do that um, but I, I really see it as a painting with this added element of um, paper collage and I'm using this um, 
old decorator's brush. Which is very handy for putting um, large areas of colour down. And the colour, I'm using a nice warm colour. Again, most of that will probably be covered up as I work over the painting. But because it was such a hot day and there's quite a lot of warm colours, I'm thinking it's going to work really well as a background kind of underpainting. Um, so some of the paint's going on quite thinly, just adding a bit of water to thin it down a bit. Trying to get the get it all pulling together a little bit a bit of red here. As I said it it will mostly be covered. Not sticking to one colour, I'm trying to um, bring other colours in as well. There's a lot of shade as well um, in this area. So I'm bringing that in just to add a bit of depth, darker colour and it will all help when I start to um, fairly pick out at this point elements. And the whole thing I want to be quite free. So what I can do now is start to build up with some more collage. Um, well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to work into it with a... They're very cheap brushes, these, because otherwise they get covered in glue. And I don't want to do a fine um, piece of work. I want it to be quite free. But I'm going to use this because what I want to do now is just get a little idea of the composition and where everything is within the canvas. So... There's a little touch of sky there, and then the rest of it is basically buildings. Lots of buildings, um, quite high um, skyscrapers in the background. Um, so I'm just really dividing the canvas up into areas here. And there's a, basically it's a street with a market. Each shop is like a little market stall, really. And um, they have lots of things. This area here is is going to be like a market store with all sorts of bits and pieces on it. So quite a jumble of things. And then there's a lot of people walking up and down, which I'll gradually bring in as I um, just to as a, a figure here. But that will become more apparent. And then there's a lady here with an umbrella. Keep the sun off. Actually it's further over. At this stage if you it's not really a mistake, it's just you're just working it out. It doesn't matter if you don't get it quite right, you can you can sort it out later. But it at this point it's just to give me an idea of where everything's coming within the the painting. So there's lots of signs like you get in Japan in these sort of places, lots of colourful signs and big buildings. So it's just giving me a little idea of where everything's coming without going into detail, just a very rough kind of um, rough idea. Um, and I can build on this and, it, and nothing's set in stone I can change as I go along what I want to do now is um, gradually build up some of the background area with, with some collage so I will be looking for certain types of papers that would work quite well for buildings um, this is the trouble with doing a video is um, there's a lot of rooting around in um, 
through bits of paper so it makes it kind of a bit boring to watch perhaps I don't know um, anyway I've got this one piece of um, this lovely account book and I'm going to add some more actually because it's so nice this time I'm going to just fold it and tear it I don't know if it's going to work because the paper's so strong that um, sometimes it's quite hard to tear it but that will stop me getting fussy when it's it? so I'm going to add another piece and perhaps that's probably a bit too big so I'm getting layers of paper now on and then gradually start to build it up. I'm not bothered if the colours um, not quite right because I'll be painting over it later as well so it's all going to change as I work through. I'm actually looking for a piece of um, newspaper so over here. Oh, I found it. It's a piece of newspaper. And so it's got some great, I love the pieces where you've got um, probably the stock exchange or something, I don't know. Lots of figures. I like that for, for these sort of shapes beyond. So, building it up and building it up. I'm trying to find paper that kind of works for a certain um, feel. So I want this sort of this kind of business paper, newspaper. And I think it works really well in this type of thing. I'm going to take this one over the top of the um, what am I going to do? I'll bring it in here I think. Could always add more papers on different time to get um, to get it to work. At this stage it's still sort of fairly early in the, well very early in the painting. So I'm looking for things that um, it's going to work for background really. So you get lots of these big signs on some of the buildings which make it all really very colourful. Um, so I'm going to bring this colour. Yeah. It's just an edge of a, a flyer or something. And I'm gradually going to add more pieces 
like this to build up the all the sort of intricate colour and shape. obviously it's perspective so the signs that are closer are often quite big and then as they go further away they get smaller so basically that's what I've got to try and build up in the painting is this feeling of depth with the different sizes I'm going to use the scissors a bit here because what I want to do is cut out some pieces of this junk nail build up those sort of areas. And I'm not bothered about what it says on it, because usually I'm only using pieces of things, they're not actually supposed to be, you know, it's really, you probably wouldn't be able to read much of it. Um, Quite nice when you get a nice bright piece like this. With the writing on. Move that piece over a little bit. Sometimes, you know, if the paint, if the glue is still wet, you can move things about, which is very handy. Of course, you can stick stuff over the top as well, which is also handy. So nothing's set in stone, and you can paint over it, which I probably will some of it. I'm still building it up quite good to get areas, some areas are um, very kind of full and interesting and other areas are, are much quieter. So there's a building here which is quite plain. Um, So before I do too much, I'm just going to work out where this building is going to come. I'm just painting in the side of this building. Doesn't matter if I go over some of that. It's going to give a nice feel, and I'm just judging where the where it comes within this sort of shape. It's all about composition and drawing, really, because you're actually trying to get it fairly close to what's there without getting fussy. So this is going to be quite a quiet area of the painting, I should say, really. So we've got this grey building and then there's a lot more going on down here, which we'll, we'll get to later on. Take some of that paint over the edge. It's still, the paint, the papers and the glue is still drying off, so it looks as though it's bubbling up a bit, but that should be fine later on. So that's handy to have done that, because now I can see a bit better what's going on up here. There's um, another um, building sort of on at the edge so what I need to do is I don't want to bit get too fussy with it I'm going to add a bit of newspaper actually and if it's not exact I'm not too worried I'd rather have an interesting 
painting than, than worry too much about getting every single skyscraper, skyscraper in the right place. <laughs> so I'm just going to bring that in. Newspaper's great for these sort of grey, greyish sort of buildings. Very useful thing to, to have. And then this area right here is actually sky. It's the only little tiny bit of sky in the whole painting. But I want to get that in because that's going to really be... Um, it's useful to have that on the canvas at this stage. Um, it's giving me a marker really where everything's going to work around it. It's all quite complex really. So this area here, I can go back and adjust the colour, is sky. And then you've got various buildings and edges of buildings. So that's probably one of the lighter areas um, in the painting and there's another area down here. There's a lot of light actually in between the figures so I'm going to lighten this area up before I put any figures on. This area is, is the market stall which I've got to do later on. So it's starting to come but it's going to take a lot of work to get this um, to get this painting to work. So I need to crack on. 